Congratulations! If you're watching this video, it probably means you just finished your game and you're ready to take it to the next level. Whether you want to share the game with your friends or release it publicly as a commercial game, this is the series for you. We'll go over building a Unity project, creating a simple setup file, and finally releasing your game to itch.io. And all of this will be completely step by step. So if you're excited to learn how to do these incredible things, be sure to smash that like button and be sure to go down to the comment section and tell me all about your project. Anyway, let's get into the video. Kia ora everyone, my name's Alex from the Programming Juvenile and welcome back to another video. If you've never heard my voice before, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on the chance to hear it again. And if this video gets, mm, let's say 20 likes, I'll make sure the next tutorial in the series releases a week early. Now that sounds cool. Anyway, enough of the chatter, let's get stuck in. Now before we do anything, make sure to open up Unity. This is a very crucial step, so don't miss it. Now that we have Unity open, you can click to open your current project that you want to create the build for. Of course, if you haven't created a project yet, you are kind of in the wrong place. And I'd recommend coming back in a couple of months when you have a game made. I've already created a small little game for this tutorial, so I'll open it up. Now, patience is a virtue, ladies and gentlemen. I promise, Unity will open up eventually. Just gotta give him some time to wake up. <laughs> Anyway, as you can see, I've created this very small and simple project for today's tutorial. If we start up the game, you can see we have a play and exit button. Wow! And if I were to press the play button, I'd get chucked straight into the game. The only goal of this game is to run into as many of these green blocks as possible without either sliding off the map or into one of the evil blocks. Anyway, let me close out of that. For the most part, it really doesn't matter what state your game is at right now. If it's playable in the editor and there aren't any errors, you should be fine continuing with this tutorial. Now we have everything ready, it's time to prepare for building our new game. Firstly, click the file tab at the very top left of the screen. This opens up a sub-menu where you'll find the build settings button. Open that now. The first thing you'll see at the top of this window is scenes to build. Before doing anything, make sure all your game scenes are in this box and in the order you want the player to play them in. As you can see here, I have the main menu scene before the game scene scene. So as soon as the player opens my game, they get taken straight to the main menu. Now, if we focus our attention down to the platform section, you'll notice I have selected the PC, Mac and Linux standalone platform. Unity supports many platforms such as PS4, Xbox One and even iOS and Android. But in today's video, I'll only be building my project to PC, so make sure that is selected. Now, to the right of this, you'll see a list of settings. Keeping these as default is probably the best thing to do. Just make sure the settings aren't too different from mine and you should be fine. Finally, before building our game, we need to open the player settings tab by pressing well, the player settings button. You should see a tab that looks like this one. I have mine docked to the side like this because of personal preference. Now on this tab, there are some very important settings. The first is the company name. I'm going to put in my company, which is Redman Games. If you don't own a company, just think of a cool company name or just simply put in your name. Next, there's a product name. This one is quite self-explanatory. Just put in your name of your game. I'm going to put in Icy Blocks because, you know, it's a banger name. Next, you can put in whatever version of this game it is in. Since it's the first time I've built this game, I will just be calling it version 1.0. After that, you can select a default icon for your game. This will show up and see of the basic Unity icons, so I'd highly recommend making an icon. I'm just going to go back and grab one of the icons I used for one of my first projects a couple of years ago. Just below this, you'll see a setting to add your own cursor to the game. I'm going to skip this and leave it blank, but if you want to add your own cursor, you should just be able to drag and drop in your cursor just like with the icon. And if you're adding your own cursor, make sure to add a cursor hotspot. This is the position at which the click will be registered. So if you have a cursor that points to the top right, put the cursor hotspot at the very tip at the top right. Okay, now we have done all of these settings. Let's focus our attention down to here. If you click the icon button, you'll see what your icon is going to look like in all of those many sizes. If it looks good to you, then click the icon button again to close it. Next, you can click the resolution and presentation. For the most part, these settings don't matter too much, but going through them all and making sure they all make sense for the game you're working on is important. For example, I've set the full screen mode to full screen. I've ticked these three settings and then I've decided to disable capture single screen. 
I've also disabled that ugly Unity dialogue that comes up sometimes because I find it very unprofessional. For the rest of the settings, you should be able to just copy mine and you'll be fine. Unless you strongly think you want to change one of the settings. Now, you can close out the resolutions and presentation tab and then we are done. I find that the next three tabs below don't change much and are perfectly fine as the default settings. Now I'm going to close out the project settings and go back over to the build settings window. Now that we've done all the prep work, we are finally ready to build our project. Pressing the build button will open up a new window where you can select the folder you want the game to build in. I'm going to go to my desktop and create a new folder for the game called IC Blocks Build. Now, making sure it's selected, you can click on Select Folder at the bottom right of the window. After this, don't do anything. After a few settings, it should start building your game, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And there we go, all done. Automatically a new window will come up showing you all the files for your game. Now to make sure it all works you can click open the ex executable file in the middle and you should be able to play your game. If so, congratulations, you've gone through episode 1 of this new tutorial series. You now know how to build your own game projects from start to finish. Next time I'll be teaching you how to make these files and turn it into one simple setup file so anyone can install your game easier, quicker and cleaner. Of course, if anything went wrong for you and you can't quite follow along with this tutorial or you don't understand how to do something, be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you ASAP. You can also join the Programming Juvenile Community Discord if you're looking for more help or just want to come along and talk to some amazing game devs. You'll find everything you need to know about indie game dev on the Community Discord, so be sure to click the link in the description to join. There's also another link to it up here on my channel page. If the next video of the series is already out, you should find a link to it in the description and in the cards above. And if I get my tags right, it should come up on the side as a recommended video. Here's hoping. If the next video in this series is not out yet, then be sure to check out the rest of the channel. I have plenty of videos on my current game, Project Paradox, and even a day in the life video. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If today's video helped you out, be sure to subscribe and share this video to all your friends. Anyway, I hope you have a good rest of your week, and if you're just about to start school again for the year, like I am, well, good luck.